Lighting a candle in the darkness helps us find our way. In darkness, we lose direction. We cannot see where we've been or where we are going. A single candle flickering brightly helps us find our way again. Stir up your might and come save us. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine that we may be saved. Light one candle, see it glow brightly, so that all may know how one candle shows the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine, that we may be saved. <coughs> Let's pray. Dear God, on this first Sunday in Advent, let this light shine brightly as the days grow shorter so that we will be ready for your face to shine upon us on Christmas <clears throat> Day. In Christ the Savior's name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to our first Sunday in Advent. Good morning. Good morning. This morning I'd like to say thank you to Betty and Daryl for celebrating their 61st with us and thank you for the flowers <coughs> and again there will be no adult Bible study until January 8th. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Then this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. stand for the call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now we are here, standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a well-built city. Its seamless walls cannot be breached. All the tribes of Israel the Lord's people, make their pilgrimage here. They come to give thanks to the name of the Lord, as the law requires of Israel. Here stand the thrones where judgment is given, the thrones of the dynasty of David. Pray for peace in Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. O Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls, and prosperity in your palaces. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, may you have peace. <coughs> for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek what is best for you, O Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. You join me in hymn number 688.
first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of all, the most important place on the <coughs> It will be raised above the other hills, and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up on hill the house, the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. There he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion. His word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will meditate between nations and will settle and turn international disputes. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. The nation will no longer look fight against nation nor train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And our second book we'll be reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. This is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shiny armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of vile parties and drunkenness or in sexual immorality, or in moral living, or in quarreling, or jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. several times already. Today is the first 
day of Advent. <coughs> that wonderful holiday of Thanksgiving is over. And the day after Thanksgiving is the day that I take down all the fall and Thanksgiving decorations, pack them in their boxes, and put them away for another year. And the day after that, I have done bringing in all the Christmas boxes, and I start putting up Christmas uh, programs. And in those uh, Christmas uh, decorations, and in those boxes are those long tubes of wrapping paper. And I always, not that I like wrapping packages very much, but I love to decide which one I'm going to wrap a package in because there are so many choices. And a few years ago, um, I wrote a poem entitled Christmas Wrappings, which I'd like to share with you this morning. It isn't just the gift we should enjoy, but the gateway to the gift. The wrappings should be gazed upon, enjoyed, tucked away in our Christmas memories. A bow used so often, no one can remember a Christmas without it. Plain brown bag, lovingly covered with crayon drawings. A new decoration made from something not associated with gift wrappings. A cadre of marching snowmen rescued from a cereal box. The package wrapped in a page from last week's comic strip. This Christmas, Delight in how your package, your gift, is wrapped. And cherish the one who wrapped it just for you. And above all, we should cherish our gift from God, a gift of unending love, the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And now let us return to our Lord a portion of the blessings we have received. Will the ushers come forward? Good morning, good morning. <laughs> 
Thank you guys for your prayers. My uh, definitely struggling through the sickness a few days ago. My uh, older three kids and I are at least on the on the mend at this point, but um, my youngest is still still hit pretty hard. So, but is there praises and prayers to share this morning? Yes. I would like to thank God that in His mercy He allowed me to be married to the same woman for forty years. <laughs> thank you for family joining us for Thanksgiving and give them a safe trip home. I'm thankful for 61 years with the same man <laughs> and all the children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. <laughs> Thanksgiving for safe travel yesterday. The rest of the day yeah. is from a close call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm thankful for 55 years with one woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, know, I don't know if Bill wants to say, but I know Bill and Bonnie's anniversary is this week, too. Is it not? I guess so. so <laughs> Am I wrong? I, I saw it in the okay, since we're sharing it. <laughs> yeah, thankful for safety and security in the woods and yeah. success for the hunters. Right. And for a beautiful Christmas walk. Yeah. On Friday. Great community. It's nice and warm out too. It's a fantastic uh, day on Friday. It was good to see our town on Friday night look like it used to. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to the volunteers for putting up this beautiful Christmas tree. It was a lot. Yeah. 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 Are there any other prayer requests to share? Yeah. Uh, Prayers for Don uh, Osborne. Yeah. There's for Terry. Leanne. Dick Nelson. Mm-hmm. Nancy and Nancy. Mm-hmm. Prayers for the families in Ukraine. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, what a gift it's been to spend Thanksgiving, holidays, events uh, in the company of friends, family, loved ones, even strangers as well. We thank you uh, for the gift of the community, of time spent well together. We thank you for the travel to and from. Thank you for keeping us safe as well. We do pray for those in need as well, those who are sick, those who are struggling, those who are going through hard, hard situations as well. Uh, we, we pray for their comfort and encouragement, for your presence to be upon them. For also those <coughs> in the church to surround them as well and lift them up. We do pray for the continued war in Ukraine and for those that are struggling, and whether it's in Ukraine or Russia. And we pray for, uh, pray for your presence there as well. We, we praise you as well for this Advent season praising of your presence here with us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And join me in one third.
season, but you might talk about, you know, the advent of the new year, you might talk about, you know, the advent of a, a special visit by, by someone uh, in authority or, or someone you know as well. So that's what advent means. Um, advent actually literally means the coming. So that is why uh, we're looking forward to the, the coming of Jesus. And it was in fact started about the 4th century, which happens to be around the same time that, that the councils uh, of, uh, if you've ever heard of the Council of Nicaea, uh, it's where we get our Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed. And, and it was around that same time period where, where a whole bunch of what is called the Church Fathers got together and really wanted to, to discover for themselves a really plant the, the, the basics of what it means to be a part of a, of, of a church or a Christian in those days, a follower of Jesus Christ. And so Advent was begun around that time because it was a, a remembering of the fact that Jesus was indeed going to come again. Even in Paul's time, you can see in his letters, he is anticipating maybe Jesus' return. In fact, uh, 
in those first few centuries, they were still looking for Jesus to eminently return, meaning, you know, it could happen like tomorrow. And we may, of course, 2,000 years later, look at Jesus' coming, but we don't necessarily have the same thought that, oh, he's, he's definitely going to return tonight or tomorrow, any second. We have more of a general idea that he's going to be coming again. So, to talk about the Advent candle, the, the wreath was actually always part of Advent, and it symbolized with the fact that you use evergreens and it's a circle. It was an, a, a view of ongoing life. The, the circle, it is supposed to be looked at as a, a continuation, and not just a continuation, but a, a life-giving continuation. So the, the green during wintertime was always supposed to symbolize the ongoing sense of, of life. The candles themselves, now, I'll admit that, th that three of them are white, because when I tried to put the purple ones in, they kept falling over. <laughs> and so I got frustrated, and I found, ones that, I found the ones that would work. <laughs> so, but the three candles, they, the, or at least the three purple candles, would represent hope, and peace and love. Now, obviously, if you think back just to the beginning of our service when we were talking about a bright light, when, when the readings were read off, a bright light, it was symbolizing hope, okay? Now, the other two was peace and love, and, of course, the, the rose-colored one uh, symbolizes joy. So, the Advent season is to actually represent hope, peace, joy, and love. And then, of course, the center one is, is lit either on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. As a sense of that is what the fulfillment of, of God's kingdom on earth is supposed to look like. Jesus' second coming, and, of course, initiated by his first coming. Okay? So, that is, that is in general why we actually celebrate Advent. I know that it sometimes feels like it's something else that we do, it's another tradition, but I am definitely all about the values. If you have been in a meeting with me, you will, you will know I keep wanting to make sure that, that the heart of something is really portrayed. Why are we doing something? And, and it's something that we actually even do uh, as a family. It's not something that we used to ever do as a family, not even uh, in my childhood. I don't remember, in fact, even hearing about Advent as a child. Um, it was seen as just one of those traditions. However, when I got older and realized what it was supposed to entail, what it's supposed to mean, and what you're supposed to pass on through the communication of it and the lighting of the candle, it's really just an awareness, an acknowledgement, and a remembering of Jesus' coming again and what he, is, what he is wanting to bring and what he's wanting to do. And I felt like it was really important to keep re-remembering over and over because that is, that is one of the things that we hold on to when it comes to looking ahead. Now, I did not name the message today uh, just to explain what Advent was, I named it Let's Go. Because, interestingly enough, you might say, okay, we are looking for someone to come, not for us to go. However, when it comes to anticipating the special arrival of an event or someone, what happens? We, someone will get up and maybe it's the Thanksgiving uh, dinner, you know, but I, I could still imagine Wendy getting up and asking, I need some people help. But in essence, she's saying, let's go. Let's get this started. Right? We have to prepare. And that's what we're talking about. So I want to just point out, in Psalm 122, it actually does say, let's go. Although, it says it this way. I, am, I was glad, <coughs> excuse me. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now here we are, standing inside your gates. Okay? 
Now I want to turn again to our second reading, which was Isaiah. Isaiah 2. Let's see, where will I start? In verse 3, people from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God, and there he will teach us his ways, we will walk in his paths. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion, his word will go out from Jerusalem. And then it says some other good things. So, let us go. But what are they wanting? They're anticipating God's presence. They're anticipating that when you go to the house of the Lord, or when you enter his gates, what's going to happen? You're going to see him. You're going to be next to him. You're going to experience his presence. You're going to experience what he has to say, what he's doing. Um, and that is what we say when we are anticipating something that we really value. So, I'm, I'm going to go through a few points, as I often do, because I want to make sure that, that we are, again, simplifying the comparison that we live through, and not just, well, how, how do I actually anticipate the second return of Christ, except maybe by, by lighting a candle? What, what, is it, what is it doing? So, what happens before a special event? I... I, and, and you could probably list a few more things in your head, but so before Thanksgiving, before Thanksgiving, right? There's preparation, there is cleaning, at least in our house, there is food to think through, the food preparations, there's going to be not just decorations along the house, but even decorations inside the house. You're going to be thinking like, as actually, which, which goes really well with Bonnie's reading, when you're thinking about wrapping up Thanksgiving stuff, and now you're unwrapping the Christmas uh, decorations. Maybe stuff for the outside, maybe stuff for the table eventually. Um, there's, there's outfits, there's Christmas uh, decorations for, of course, the tree and, and gifts to wrap, things like that. Um, and, and we, as well as a family, we do the same. Now, now before, when we were living in a place that didn't have snow in, in November, we waited until after Thanksgiving, uh, sometimes the first week of December, to unwrap and get ready for Christmas. Although this year, we actually started about a week or two ago. I think because Thanksgiving, the community Thanksgiving meal felt like Thanksgiving, right after that, we started unwrapping our Christmas stuff. So we were already preparing putting Christmas songs on, right? And typically the Saturday comes, you, you make the music loud, and you all jump in, and you have a fun time basically putting things together for an event that's going to happen uh, maybe even a month, more than a month down the road, okay? So, I want to share a few points, because, because Advent it happens a little bit the same way. When we're starting to think about Jesus' return, we think, man, it's been a long time. It's been, it's been more than 2,000 years, right, since, since Jesus was born. And we think, how do, you, how do you live in anticipation, but at the same time realize that maybe it's not happening in my lifetime either. <laughs> but there are ways that we, we do this. So the first one is... We prepare ourselves, meaning we simply understand what God is asking us to do in the meantime. Before Jesus' return, why has he left us here on earth? Otherwise, and I've said this jokingly to some in the past, when you accept Jesus, you don't get beamed up to heaven, right? We all know that. <laughs> right? That, so, so obviously there's something else to accomplish once you say, I'm a follower of Jesus, it's not like, okay, you've won. You've moved on to the next phase, right? No, it's actually, okay, I am preparing by living the way that he has, he has lived. I'm preparing myself and realizing that there is more for me to learn, there's more for me to actually grow in. Because a great friend of mine, his name was Bruce, and uh, he was, and this was about 20 years ago, but he was, 
He was a, I think he was about in his 50s, and he told me once, you know, after all this time of going to church, I thought that the journey was leading up to this point where I would say, you know what, I want to follow Jesus. And he said, but I realized that the, the decision to follow Jesus was actually not the end of the journey, the decision, but in fact the beginning. It is now actually to say, I've, I've now chosen Jesus' way, so now it's time for me to walk the, this path of, of maturing in Christ, of, of deciding that, you know what, he is now going to mold me, he's now going to shape my character, shape my heart the way that it needs to be uh, molded. So, the next one is, we prepare the space around us. Just as in we are preparing ourselves for Christmas, thinking about all that entails, we also prepare the space around us. We prepare by, by what? Becoming a good steward around us? We prepare by, by taking joy in, in setting up the decorations? We take joy in being a part of the, the, the planning and execution of the event? Now, one of my favorite Christmas movies, I admit, is still from my childhood. And, and maybe you've seen it, but it, it's uh, Scrooge McDuck. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the name was Scrooge, but it was the DuckTales version. It was the ducks. You know? and, and, and I always thought Scrooge McDuck did a great job being the Bob Humbug Scrooge, right? Uh, I think the movie is like 35 minutes long. But it's one of my favorites. And if you remember the story, he is totally against the holidays. He's totally against what he feels is the demand upon him and the demand upon his wealth, the demand upon his time, and the demand upon just his presence to, to participate in, in all these different activities. Meaning, uh, I, I remember the one scene where the two guys come in. I, I, it's supposed to, I think, be like the Salvation Army people. They come in with their can. They say, can you spare a few few pennies, of course? And he turns the conversation around and basically says, by me giving to you, I take away your job and I don't want to do that to you. And then he kicks them out of his office, right? <laughs> so so it's, it's this sense that, you know what? I don't, I don't want to feel like I have to submit to this tradition. I, don't, I, I feel like there's a law that I have to live up to, and I choose not to, because I'm rich and wealthy and I can do whatever I want. But then by the end, of course, because there's the three spirits, I really like the giant. He, he was very jolly. Um, a lot of good food, too. So, but, but through it all, he changes, obviously, his mind, and, and in my opinion, it, it, I, I couldn't quite tell at the end of this story where, where his mind was changed because of fear, or because of invitation, but the posture changes, and he goes from, from saying no to everything to fully participating. Now, in my opinion, the difference between the, the two sides, and this is my optimism, uh, if I can define what happened during the movie at the end. He goes from saying, this was a law, this was a, a demand upon me, to this is an invitation. Right, so Donald Duck is his, his nephew, and he realizes that, no, actually, the invitation is to participate in, in the joy, participate in the love, in the fellowship, participate in the hope of, of what it means to give, help so, give someone a new life, you know, when he was helping uh, Tiny Tim's family, right? And so we prepare ourselves and we prepare the space around us with great anticipation and excitement for what is to come. The next one I have is we live in gratefulness. I, I spoke about this on, on Thanksgiving Eve, actually. But gratefulness is actually a way of life. And I spoke about the different ways that it benefits, not just, not just as a spiritual practice, but in fact a mental, an emotional, and even a physical practice. In fact, research has shown the benefits of gratefulness 
far outweigh any other way of living in terms of, of what it can do for our, our mental state, what it can do for our, us physically speaking. And to live in gratefulness is to actually live outside of ourselves, which is, uh, which is number four. I, I wrote, we get out of our own way. I Meaning we realize it's not just solely about us. It's actually about being a part of something bigger than ourselves. It's, it's being a part of a group, being part of a community. And, and that's what has been so amazing about events like even Friday. When you go and you see, yes, you see familiar faces. I saw people in the, in the cookie line. I saw, of course, someone uh, in, at the... Uh, the, um, the veterans corner, right, the, the veterans park, right? You you see people who are familiar, but you also see people who you're not familiar with, and you you feel that sense of this is a a bigger event than any one person, any one group, and it does something greatly in our hearts to show us that you know what I am part of something bigger, I am part of something that that took more than even ten people, more than than it even took 50 or 100 people to necessarily put together because you can't control when everyone shows up. You can't control an invitation. But you can invite and see the people show up and, and know that it's, it's actually the culmination of not just the preparations, but everybody coming to celebrate as well. And then the last is we are drawn out. I, I put it this way because there are different ways of being drawn out, as my wife would definitely tell me. She's highly introverted. But being drawn out means that we are willing to go outside of our normal spaces. We're willing to go outside of what we are, are used to. We're typically uh, in certain habits and rhythms that take us forward constantly, but, but these events take us outside of ourselves. For instance, on Christmas, right, you, you will be thinking, okay, I have to prepare uh, gifts, I need to go out. I know that people do a lot, of, uh, a lot of online shopping, but you're still typically thinking outside of yourself. I, I was happy to see the, the Lions Club people, Brent and, and Mickey, come out the, uh, I don't remember even which day it was last week, but they were preparing the s'mores bags. And, and you would think that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't take that much to put the, the marshmallows, throw them in a bag. But, but it was good to see everyone smiling and having a good time, coming together to put chocolate graham crackers and marshmallows in baggies, right? And I know that other preparations went on for the Thanksgiving event. But that's, that's what it does. It draws us out and says, participate. Be a part of something. Give of yourself. And in the process, you find, you find the joy that, that cannot be found by, by grasping for something, but by letting go of something. And that is letting go of, of my way of, of trying to live outside what I feel are demands upon myself. But in fact, looking at it as an invitation and, 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 and going out. So I wanted to, to, to share these because when, when we're looking at anticipation of Jesus' return, I really want it to be something that is, that is very now, that is very what seems simple, but, is, but is, is very as life continues on. This is what we look forward to. We look forward to Christmas, and then when we get to the day after Christmas, we look forward to New Year's. That anticipation is part of how we are to live, that, the excited anticipation. Hopefully not just, it's New Year's and i gotta, I got to cut back on all those Christmas foods, right? But in fact, looking as, it's a, it's a new year, it's a new opportunity, it's a new, it, it's something, new, a new hope to look at. And say, I'm ready to grow, I'm ready to, I'm ready to live, I'm ready to get outside myself. I'm ready to, to take some risks. Because that's what, we're, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, at the possibility and the opportunity that, that God presents to us. 
The last is, I, I just uh, had a call, I think it was, um, it was probably just over a week ago. His name is John, and he's actually, he's actually from New Zealand, and he was a team member of mine. Um, we met just, I believe, about 10 years ago. And he was on staff with me. He was one of my team members. And we went through a lot together. He was one of the few people who, who traveled thousands and thousands of miles with me. And we finally caught up on WhatsApp. It's, a, it's just a communication, but video chat. And, we, and he was telling me where he was in the world. He travels still quite a bit. And we were telling him where we was. But he, but he said, you know, at some point as I travel back through, I'd love to see you guys. And I said, absolutely, you're welcome anytime, and just stop in. It doesn't, it doesn't take long to give us notice, you know, a day if we need to just go by and pick you up at the airport. But the excitement was there for the possibility that I'll see John, even though I haven't seen him in person in, in probably seven or eight years. The anticipation is, is there's possibility there. There is... There is memories to think about in the past, but there's there's more memories to make in the future. And I said, you know, anytime, you know, he has something that he wants me to to pray for him about or participate with him, you know, I'd love to connect with him in the future. And that's what it's about. It's it's about those things that 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 help us remind of ourselves about the past, but really look forward to the future. That really look to there is there is life that's going to happen in possibly the days, the weeks, the months, or if years need be to come. And that's how we live in Advent. We live by remembering the past, but looking ahead to the future, the possibility and the opportunity, how God is leading us. So maybe that will help you uh, think differently as you continue to decorate for Christmas. To think really, again, about why you're doing this, about, about why does it make it so special to even put up decorations. And hopefully, if you say bah about this year, you might think, you know, do I just feel like it's a demand upon me, or is it an invitation to join however I can, in whatever capacity I can. And maybe it doesn't look the same as everybody else's, but what does it look at? What, what does it look like? This, this particular season. So let's continue to celebrate the fact that Jesus did come, and he is, of course, his spirit is with us, but he is coming again. And we can live in anticipation that that, that is happening, that it is being worked out. And that's what it means, is the kingdom, when, when scripture says, your kingdom come, your will be done. That there's peace and hope and joy and love to be established over and over and over again. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the Christmas season. We thank you that there is a celebration every year. And though some might only celebrate it as a holiday of gift giving, that, that it is a holiday to remember over and over that you decided to come be with us. That as God, you just said, I, I want to be with my children. I want to be with the people I love, and nothing will stop me in doing that. And I thank you for the invitation that is given to us to participate, to join you in, a, in the establishment of these treasures, love and peace and joy. And, and we thank you for, for how this draws us together in relationship to family, how it draws us together in community, and even with strangers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now we are going to sing hymn 137.
Romans says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. And then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.